Okay, in today's top topic, we're going to talk about sex. Awkward! Um, there's been a lot of strange teaching on sex, um, especially um, in religious corners, I guess. Um, there was a book called uh, I Kissed Dating Goodbye um, that a lot of people uh, were really bothered by. I never read it, so I can't really comment. But um, just a lot of a lot of things um, <coughs> that people are a little bit unsure of. And so I'm trying to address this from a hopefully somewhat of a general sense. And I hope that it is um, clear without being too um, dogmatic. With complicated um, ideas, I really don't want to um, be real legalistic about stuff. I want to say very clearly what the Bible says, but remember, sometimes, sometimes things aren't as black and white as they as they seem. You know, um, when I was a kid, I mean, for instance, Republicans. Republicans were right and Democrats were wrong. Well, <laughs> things aren't that simple. Like, they just aren't. So, sex in general. First off, um, a lot of people don't realize this, but the Bible very much so does uh, condemn sex outside of marriage. Um, I will read a few passages, but these are by no means an exhaustive list. Genesis chapter 2, verses 24 through 25 in the NASB says, For this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. The idea of sex is in the confines of marriage. Okay, And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. Okay, so 1 Corinthians so here we have a clear affirmation in Genesis 2.24 that uh, sex is for marriage. And nowhere else in the Bible is it ever um, commended. Um, but there are other a lot of other things that are condemned. Um, homosexual sex is condemned. Sex with animals is condemned. You know, go down the list. Uh, First Corinthians chapter 7. Verse 2 says, But because of immoralities, each man is to have his own wife, and each woman is to have her own husband. So right, right there, he clearly affirms that sex is for marriage. Because it's called sexual immorality if they have sex outside of marriage. And he later condemns um, sex with the prostitutes. So any misplaced um, attempt to bring the Old Testament and prostitutes and whatnot into some kind of a safe room where sex isn't uh, holy is just misplaced. Verses 8-9, through nine, um, But I say to the unmarried and to widows that it is good for them if they remain even as I. But if they do not have self-control, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Once again, the idea of um, sex is for marriage. Hebrews 13-4, I'm not going to turn there, but it says don't keep the, uh, keep the uh, marriage bed undefiled. Um, by sexual immorality. You know, in other words, only have sex in marriage. That's what it was made for. Um, so that is the broad picture that sex is for marriage, okay? But let's kind of look at things. The Bible does not condemn masturbation. Now, masturbation has been around for a very long time. Um, it was known at the time of Moses. It was known in Egypt at the time of Moses. You know, it's not like, oh, people didn't know about it. No, they knew about masturbation. Nowhere is it condemned either in the law or in the New Testament. Um, <coughs> but what is condemned is lusting after someone. However, temptation is also not, not condemned. Nor is confusion. So let's look at these one by one. First off, let's look at confusion because it's the last. So we'll go backwards. Um, God said, Jesus said that there are many people who are um, um, eunuchs. Some are born them and some are made them. Um, I think that obviously this this is applying to people who have partially formed sex organs in both. You don't have to get corrective surgery if you don't want to. There's nothing that says you have to. Um, if you do want to decide to, um, I always go with what is the least invasive? What biologically were you supposed to be? Um, and what is more formed? And there's just a series of things that needs to happen there, and it's not quite as simple as that. So let's just say I already have commented on that on other videos. 
I think we'll just go ahead and stop it there. So con God doesn't condemn c confusion. If somebody believes, th th if a man believes himself to be a woman trapped in a man's body, obviously he's he's mistaken. There's there's you know something up there that is confused. Well, that sounds a little a little a little bad. <laughs> but that's kind of how it is. I mean, if you are a man, you are a man. If you are a woman, you are a woman. So. God doesn't condemn us for confusion, okay? What God does condemn us for is for sinning. When you are a man and claim to be a woman, so then you get a sex change and have sex with other men, you are still homosexual. All that has happened is you've mutilated your penis. Your penis has not become a vagina. You have not become a woman. You've taken pills that have hormonally changed your naturally occurring functions and have mutilated the thing that you have that's all that's really happened i mean you can call it whatever you want but scientifically that's all that's happened um it would be the same as you know in the olden times cutting off the penis i mean it's basically the same thing it is not this you know magical thing that you're now a woman no <laughs> No, your man who's taking medication and who has had parts of his body genetically enhanced or otherwise. Uh, so there's that. Um, God doesn't condemn temptation. If a man ha is tempted to have sex with a man, attracted to men, he doesn't, he doesn't condemn them for that. Um, if a man feels like a woman, he doesn't condemn them for that. You know, the Bible addresses sin, not brokenness. And a lot of times, transgender and homosexuality, it's just instantly ostracized when a better solution is to love them and, and in the case of transgender, to get them the help that they need. I mean, if I believe myself to be a tree, I, I'm not a tree, and that's not healthy. And what you're seeing now is you're seeing other people even take the same arguments. You know, homosexuals said love is love, so now pedophiles are saying love is love. And it's like, Ugh. well, that was a steep slope. That's what happens when you don't follow God's standard. I know that that sounds real black and white, but I'm really trying not to be. Or when, with, with transgender, well, if he believes himself to be a woman, let him get the sex change. Well, what about these kids that are coming up and saying, I'm a wolf, or I'm a, I'm a Dalmatian, or all these, I mean, nonsense things. Of course you're not, you're not really a dog. You know, uh, uh, of course you're not those things. You are what you are. God made you, excuse me, and he made each of us special. And sometimes, physically, there are deformities or... Um, things that aren't as they should be. But fear not, our body is temporary. It is passing away. And in the new heavens and the new earth, we'll be given a new body that won't be broken, emotionally or physically. See, what happens is we think that a brokenness is something that that is the end picture, and it's not. The world is broken. Just, for instance, me. Let's say, okay, let's say I'm attracted to women, and I don't feel like a woman trapped in a man's body. I realize I'm a man, and I'm also attracted to women, so problem solved, right? No, because I will still have physical problems. You know, I might get cancer. Um, I might uh, have other problems, mental problems. I might have, you know, it, just because we have problems in different areas doesn't mean that it's any different. And, but it does need to be said that people going through things like homosexuality and transgender and those kind of things, they need to be shown love. It is a Love is a basic human requirement. And the problem is that our culture has equated sex with love. And those two things are, are drastically different. Um, sex is, is great as a unifier of love. But sex can also be used in a more casual way, which is not what God intended. And so by using it in such a way, it's it's more of a harm than a good. I mean, oh, I, 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 I relieve some pressure. Okay, um, but there is no physical harm that's going to happen if you don't have sex. I mean, it's not like, oh, I have blue balls, so I'm going to die. No, <laughs> our bodies don't work like that. Um, if you ha don't have sex, nothing bad is going to happen. If you don't have love, you will know brokenness that really is hard to ever match. Living without love is... is is something I, I don't even wish on my worst enemies. A lot of 
homosexuals have had to go through the situation of not being loved by people and only finding relationships with other people that also have not received the love that they need. Now, this isn't always the case. I know that. N not every situation is the same. Don't ever stereo uh, stereotype. But with that being said, a lot of times that's the case. Anyways, um, and then masturbation. Nowhere in the Bible is masturbation condemned. It's it's Masturbation is, it, is fine as long as there's not the last that's going along with it. That's the problem. Um, the Bible does not condone rape. Um, sex should be mutually... It should be consensual. Absolutely. In every situation, it should always be consensual. What about in marriage? Yes, marital rape is a thing. That's when one partner forces themselves on the other partner, and regardless of what the other partner wants, they have sex. You can't withhold your body from me. Actually, um, you can. It's just not a great idea. What Paul was talking about was he, he was more talking about don't withhold yourselves from one another. Whatever the situation is, you should be united. Absolutely. And he was looking more of the big picture. So if your partner isn't willing to have sex with you, there's probably a problem that needs to be addressed somewhere in there. Um, also, the Bible doesn't condone, condemn, condone misogyny, basically, where the man is the Lord and everyone else just kind of goes with it. So what people do is they read the Bible, but they don't take into account what the context was, um, the translations, all these different things. They just kind of take it for face value. But the truth is, anytime that you're reading a book that is 2,000 years old, you might want to think about what you're reading rather than just blindly applying it. That's just a fact. Um, I, I'm not saying that truth is relative. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that God's ways have changed. But I am saying that the culture has changed and the worldview of people has changed and the situation of the Bible has changed. For instance, um, Christians don't believe that trimming the edges of your beard is a sin, but that was in the law. Christians nowadays get tattoos when that was convicted before. What was the bigger picture? Well, don't worship other gods. So do we still do we still don't worship other gods? Yes, absolutely, don't worship other gods. But trimming the edges of your beard really has nothing to do with worshiping as other gods anymore. It used to, but not anymore. So. You see what I'm saying? The, the 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 principle hasn't changed. Don't worship other gods. But the application has changed. See, what people do nowadays is, oh, I don't worship other gods. I just have kachina dolls in my house. What? <laughs> oh, I don't worship other gods. I just put my finances above everyone else. Oh, I don't worship other gods. I just treasure my own pleasure more than anything else. You don't really know what a god is, do you? Um... That, that's kind of what I'm talking about. So let me just summarize here because I'm not going to be able to go through every occurrence in the whole Bible. The Bible doesn't condemn misogyny. And uh, marriage should be about equality. And that's what it was made to be if you read Genesis. Um, the reason why there's a problem with husband and wife not being equals is because of sin. It caused there to be a rift in their relationship, which the man took advantage of because he was physically stronger and so forced the woman into submission. And the woman being, generally speaking, more soft-spoken, kind of got into a trap. And that led through generations and generations of man being on top and the woman just kind of having to go along with it. But just because that is an effect of the curse doesn't mean that we should not seek to rectify it. Husband and wife should be equal, as they were created to be. Male and female, he created them, not male and female <laughs> um, okay so anyways um the bible doesn't condemn dating or kissing or that kind of thing i know a lot of people um have made that into a doctrine you know the bible doesn't condemn that it doesn't condemn hugging it doesn't condemn holding hands i mean this is just this is just nonsense sex was made for marriage um and in the case of a man taking the virginity of a woman the law said see what happened is back then, if a woman was not a virgin, she wasn't seen as as worthy. Um, the man was required to pay a dowry to marry a woman, but what he had to do throughout, if, if she was if she was not a virgin, is he had to pay less, and she was also treated more with contempt, kind of like she was a whore. 
and looked down on. So God and the law fixed this by saying, okay, how about this? If you take a woman's virginity, you have to marry her. Now, the woman could say no, and as could the woman's father. They could both say no. Um, but as far as the man was concerned, he had to marry her. He had to do what he had to fix the situation. They could they could say no, but he still had to try his best to fix the situation. Anyways, so that was more about not taking advantage of the woman, not so much you know anything else. Um, and sex definitely does unite you with another person. Um, it is exactly how the Bible describes it: one flesh. I mean, it, it's something that definitely unites you with with people, and. When you have had sex with multiple people, it will leave scars. And when you have sex, it's like it's like you leave a part of you with that person, and it will hurt really, really bad. It'll hurt. Um, however, it doesn't mean it's the, it doesn't mean that's the end. Um, obviously, the ideal is that we don't have sex outside of marriage. But most everybody that I know is a sinner. Yeah. In fact, uh, yeah, everyone, everyone is a sinner and does fall short. Now, I'm not condemning premarital sex, but I'm saying if you have had mar premarital sex, there is healing. There is forgiveness. It's this easy. Lord, I messed up. Please forgive me. Well, what if you do it again? As long as you're sincere, God will forgive you. See, the, the problem is, is when we start doing things like, oh, I'll just, I'll just ask for forgiveness later. Well... <laughs> You see what I mean? That God knows that we do mess up. In fact, first, in fact, First John talks about this a lot: living in sin versus sinning. See, sometimes our passion gets a hold of us, and we do things that we maybe don't even meant to, don't even mean to do. Not that I'm condoning con condoning it. It's just that we make mistakes, you know. Um, but there's still healing and forgiveness. Now, with all that being said, men should protect women and not use them. And if you are a man, honestly. Shame on you for manipulating a woman into giving you sex and not giving her any kind of a commitment. That, that is really detestable. Um, you know, that you would take advantage of them and then just leave them. Men who have casual sex with women, in my opinion, are, are, are really, really more of users than anything. Now, if you have had sex with a lot of women in the past and you have stopped doing that, well, that's different. See, it's not our past that defines us. It's what we do with that. Well, I used to have sex with all kinds of different women and just throw them away, but I don't want to live like that anymore. Good. Good. Ask God for forgiveness and don't do it anymore. Well, I messed up again. Ask God for forgiveness and try it and, and keep going. Keep going. Don't give up. Now, I'm not teaching salvation by works, but I am teaching taking re taking responsibility for your actions. So, um, in either case, don't don't leave don't uh, don't live with guilt. And don't take advantage of people. I think that's what I'm really getting at. If you have had premarital sex, it's not the end of the world. It's okay. They're, they're, you, you will find healing. It's okay. Um, it Really, honestly, a lot of times a scar can be left even when you don't even have sex. Even when you're just really, really close to someone and they abandon you. It can also leave a scar. Um, so take take that into into account. If you are living with guilt for something you have done in the past or whatever, God doesn't want you to live like that. He wants you to be free, and there's a certain freedom in all that. So absolutely just um, pray for forgiveness and put it behind you and move on. I know that sounds really, really easy and simple. It's not going to be that easy and simple. Um, but I hope that you find the healing bit that you definitely need and that God wants to give you because you will definitely find forgiveness with God. Um, and sometimes you have to believe that you're forgiven, even if you don't feel forgiven. Well, God, I just feel like I messed up too much. Well, have you asked him to forgive you? Then he has. And it's that simple. Um, so just in, in summary here, yes, sex is for marriage. No, if you, if you sin, it's sin, it's not the end of the world. Seek God, and he will be found by you. It's that simple. You ask God for forgiveness, you ask God to move in you, and uh, you move on. But uh, don't ever feel like you have to justify living in sin because you have sinned. See, oh, well, I messed up. Therefore, the Bible doesn't really mean that I can't do that. I can do it as much as I want. No, no, no. Having premarital sex is still a sin. 
But when you do sin, God desires healing and restoration. If God wanted to kill you and just was waiting for you to...